Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of The Weekly Coder. I'm Chris, and this episode is for one of my patrons who requested that uh, I make a video showing how you can go about taking your uh, Unity project and basically exporting that to a standalone application so that you can distribute it um, to, you know, basically all the platforms that are available, Windows, Linux, uh, Mac. So I'm going to be showing you guys how to do that on Windows and Mac. Um, the process is actually very, very simple, and, and uh, there are, you can make it super complicated, but I think that's with everything in the world, right? You can overcomplicate things, and, uh, you know, you don't have to. <laughs> so what we'll do is uh, we're going to just jump right in, and uh, what I have here is a just, you know, very, very simple. I, I just put some text on the screen and said, hello world, and that's literally all we've got. There's no other logic, there's no scripts, there's no nothing. So the way that you go about exporting this is uh, you can use uh, uh, your keyboard uh, and do like Command Shift and B, I think. On Windows, it's Command or um, the, the Windows key Shift and B. I think that that's right. And the other way to do that is if you don't want to use a keyboard shortcut, you can actually go up here to File and go into Build Settings. So the build settings. <laughs> what we have is uh, we have this window here. It says scenes and build. Okay, so the only thing you really have to know about that is is that uh, Unity needs to know about all the scenes that you want to include in your final build. So by default, the first scene that, is cre that gets created is actually in the build, and that's your default scene. That's the first scene that shows up. If you've got more scenes that you need to add to your build, like as you progress with your game and you create more levels, which should be scenes, you would have to add those scenes into your build right here. Otherwise, Unity is not going to compile them, and you're never going to have a level two or a level three because they're not, they didn't get exported along with everything else. So the only thing you need to know about this window really then is, is that all the scenes that you want to export need to be in here, and they need to be in the right order. So, and by that I mean you just need to have the scene that you want to load first at position zero, because that's going to be the first scene that loads up. So that would be like a menu or, you know, a first level of a game or something like that. All the other scenes basically just get added in and uh, they get called by your code whenever you need to show them. So that out of the way, uh, we need to concentrate on the platform. So we've got all these different types of platforms that we can build for. Uh, some of these you can't build for, like the PS4, the Xbox One, because you need a different license for that. And I believe they have different versions of Unity just for these. I did a um, version, I did actually have a uh, the Wii U developer kit a while back and um, for that uh, the Nintendo um, website where you actually would log in, uh, the developer website actually had their own version sort of of Unity where you could build directly to the Wii U development console which was kinda cool. Um, but I don't know, maybe that's how the PS4 and Xbox One works as well, because if you click on these, uh, you have to actually install a module for this. So, um, and here you can open a download page. Okay, so I don't know about this. You probably have to sign up for a developer account or something and get some sort of licensing you know, out of the way, whatever. So what we're left with is this PC, Mac, and Linux standalone. This is for your major desktop operating systems, right? Uh, we also have tvOS for the Apple TV. We have iOS for iPads and um, iPhones. We've got Lumen. I have no idea what that is. Uh, Android, uh, WebGL for HTML5-based browsers. We've got Facebook, uh, which I think, uh, I don't know if Facebook is like deprecated, right? Yeah. Because that, I think their game room is not a thing anymore. I think they got rid of that. So what we're going to concentrate on is this PC, Mac, and Linux standalone. So once you click on one of these, it gives you additional settings for your platform. So in here, we can obviously choose which platform we want to target. So we either do Mac OS X, Linux, or Windows. Simple enough, right? So the first one I'll do is uh, Mac OS X. And what we do here is we kind of want to look at what we've got for player settings. I've already gone through and made a couple of changes. But by default, uh, full screen mode is set to full screen window and uh, using the native resolution. So if you don't want to do that, 
you want to have your game run at a specific resolution, right? You can do windowed and you can specify a resolution for the game to run at. In my uh, experience, 1920 by 1080, which is 1080p, uh, is a good resolution to go with. Uh, but these days we've also got a lot of 4K monitors out, so we can do 3840 by 2160. But if you just want to stay resolution independent, which is something that I think you should do as a design choice, uh, you're going to want to go with just a full screen window. Um, and then it'll run in the native resolution that is you know currently there. We can also choose to add Mac Retina support. Uh, this display resolution dialog, um, you know, we can disable that. Basically what that does is it, uh, before it launches your game, it launches this kind of dialog box where you can choose the resolution. You can allow your uh, player to choose the resolution I want to play at, along with some other settings that they can do. For now, we're just going to keep that disabled. And all of the other settings, we're just going to leave them the way they are. So going back to those build settings, um, all we really have to do now is click build. And what we're going to do is, oh yeah, wait, before I get into that, um, there's one more thing. Uh, in the player settings, we've got some just default settings here. I made the company name Weekly Coder, and you can make that whatever name of your company is. Uh, the product name is going to be the name of the app. So if you want your app to be called Unity Export, then you put that there. You can put what, what a version uh, you're currently um, basically building. And then we've got the default icon, which if you don't put anything here, it'll just use Unity's default icon. Um, and for Mac specifically, you have to go in and go into this icon settings and actually add all of these icons in these different resolutions um, so that it can properly build the uh, icon for the Mac app. Okay. So we're not going to worry about that right now. We're just going to not care about the icon. We're just going to care about actually exporting our game. So what's left to do is just to click build. So it wants us to uh, you know, name it something. And we're going to name it Unity Export, which is fine. And it's save. So now what it's going to do is it's basically going to take all of the assets that we've told it to build. And it's going to compile them into one app. All right, so now it created that for me. And that's right here. And when I double click this, it's going to launch in a window, 1920 by 1080, hello world. Okay, there you have it. And a standalone app that was built using Unity on a Mac. So now we're going to go back into Unity and we're going to change our target platform to Windows so now it's got to change the assets and uh, uh, you know things that it's going to need in order to create a Windows binary file. And the only other thing that we can select here is, or that we should select or change um, or make sure of, is that the architecture is set to x86, 64, uh, because you know most PCs these days are 64-bit machines. Uh, you can target x86 just by itself, uh, but I don't really see the point in that. Um, so here, since we've already set all these other settings in the player settings, which are usually cross-platform, we can just go ahead and click build. And we're going to go back to the desktop again. And we're going to save this as Unity Export. And I believe what it's going to do is it's going to create a folder. Uh, named Unity Export, and it's going to put all these files, the executable, all the libraries, and everything else that we need into that folder. So now if we look, yep, we have a Unity Export folder, and that folder contains a folder of uh, mono bleeding edge stuff, uh, some Unity Export data, um, and here we have some resources, right? We've got uh, DLLs, lots of DLLs, um, basically Unity Engine API stuff, and from there, uh, we've got unity export.exe. We can run that, but we have to run it on Windows. So I'm going to switch over to my Windows machine really quick. All right, and we're going to open that unity export folder. And from here, we just double click the exe, tell Windows that we do want to run it. And it's going to open that same 1920 by 1080 window. And here we are, hello world. 
So you have to make sure though, when you're distributing your Windows application, that uh, you include the entire folder. You can't just send the exe off because it's not gonna run. It's gonna come up with all kinds of uh, missing uh, library and for, actually, let's see if we can simulate this. So if we drag this out to the desktop where we don't have the library files, see how it's it's giving us an error and it's saying the program can't start because unityplayer.dll is missing from your computer. Try reinstalling the program. All right, so it's, it specifically wants this unityplayer.dll file. Let's see if that's all it takes. So obviously it's still having issues. So it won't launch, yeah, see? Um, so it, it's looking for Unity export data. So there are things that you need to have in order to still run this application. It can't just be just one application. Um, it has to be in this folder with all of these things with it. So when we run it from here, it just launches perfectly without any issues. There we go. And that's how you export uh, a Unity project to be a standalone application. And um, you know, there's not much else you can do with this. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And uh, if you did, give me a thumbs up. Comments go down below. Questions, uh, you can hit me up on Patreon or comments here. I'll try to get to them as quickly as I can. Uh, other than that, I'll see you guys in the next video, which will hopefully be sometime today or tomorrow. So until then.